The Time Travelers Surface Duo. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one we will be installing Windows 11 on the Libretto W100, the first dual screen UMPC launched all the way back in 2010. So let's get started. But why would you do this? Removing the wonderful skeuomorphic Windows 7. As we've seen in the last video, Windows 7 is just not optimized for small touchscreens like we have here. Ah, the screen is, is it's so small. No, I don't want to open Internet Explorer, please. But we've also seen from the Surface Duo that Windows 11 works really well on small touchscreens. So first, let's have a look at the Windows 11 system requirements. Processor. 1 GHz or faster with two or more cores on a compatible 64-bit processor. Our first win! We have 1.2 GHz and exactly two whole cores. Memory. 4 GB or greater. <laughs> we have half of that at 2 GB. Storage. 64 GB or greater. Okay, we have exactly 64 GB of storage. Graphics card. Compatible with DirectX 12 or later. I have no idea. As far as I know, it isn't DirectX 12 compatible. System firmware. UEFI. Secure boot capable. Nope. TPM. Trusted platform module version 2.0. Nope. So we meet at least one requirement somewhat. That's more than usual on this channel. <laughs> The way to overcome the rest is actually easy. That's right, we're gonna cheat. <laughs> I used a tool called Rufus, linked in the description, to create a Windows boot stick and in the process remove all of the requirements from the installer. So with that, let's see if it works. So now that Rufus worked its magic, I have Windows 11 on this USB stick hopefully modified to work on the W100. So let's see if it works. As usual, we have to press the keyboard button here to get into the boot menu. Okay, there we have the name of my USB drive. Let's click boot, press any key, okay. Hopefully one of them works. <laughs> okay, and we can see the Windows logo, which is just what we want. What I can also see again here is that the screen looks kind of like a mirror. I'm really sorry for the reflection. I don't know why, but I've never seen a screen that is more reflective than this one. Which is especially weird considering they wanted you to use it like an e-reader. <laughs> I mean, if you were to be outside with this thing, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't see anything on this tiny reflective screen. Okay, we are in the menu. And touch actually works on here. Cool. So yeah, let's leave it on default. And select install now. I wasn't quite sure if we could actually boot the installer from our USB stick because this device doesn't have a UEFI. And as far as I know, Windows 11 wants that. Okay, wow, it's kind of fast. Uh, no, I don't have a product key right now. Now we have to select a version and my idea here would be to use Windows 11 Home because it probably has the least amount of stuff it wants to install. So it's probably the most lightweight installation of them all. And I want to choose the N version because it omits some of the media codecs and applications, making it Hopefully a little bit slimmer than the normal Windows 11 Home. So let's see how that works out. Let's see if we can actually upgrade. I'm pretty sure we can't from Windows 7. Yeah, what I thought, we can't upgrade uh, from Windows 7. Which is also why I went straight to the method of booting from the USB stick and not trying the installer from within Windows. Oh no, I shouldn't have said on oh, no. <laughs> Why did I click close? Now we have to wait for this again. Okay, uh, it was faster than I would have expected. Windows Home N, next. And this time, let's choose custom installation. Let's delete the partitions. 
We also don't need the recovery partition because I've created a image from the whole drive in the last video. So if I want to go back to Windows 7, I can just easily do that. So let's see. We are copying files. Considering the age of this device, this is probably going to take about an hour. So I would say let's see you when we are in the out of box experience. Welcome back. So it is now about an hour later and we are in the Windows 11 out of box experience. Hey, Wi-Fi seems to be working. Yeah, I don't want to connect to the internet. Thank you. Do we have a touchscreen keyboard? No, apparent. Ah, okay, no, we, we have. So as usual, my name is, it's, it's me of course. Obviously, I don't need a password. Thank you. Ah. It's kind of slow. Okay, something went wrong. Let's see if we can just skip that. Hey, something went wrong. But this time something else. So let's just also skip that. <laughs> I hope I don't have to sit here for the next hour and press skip on all the things it can't do on this device. But I really like the little ice cream clip art here. It looks like it actually froze because I've waited now for more than 20 minutes and we're still on this screen. So I will try to reboot and hope that somehow fixes it. Okay, now I think I've actually put it in standby. I didn't even know the out of box experience could be put in standby. Let's see if that changed anything. Nope, we're still at the, oops, something went wrong screen. Yeah. Okay. Is this a good or a bad sign? Yes! <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> So yeah, this is a good sign. <laughs> yes, okay, so it might actually work. It might actually work. <laughs> okay, so that was a roller coaster. I actually thought it won't boot. Let's give it a few minutes, which is probably like half an hour again. Yes! We're finally in Windows 11, but since I didn't allow it to connect to the internet, I think we have to install some drivers first. The touch screen is working, but the second screen isn't even being detected. So let's fix that. I have a USB to ethernet dongle here. Let's hope it is supported, but it should be because I mean, it's a plug and play device. So now after installing all of the updates, both screens are working. They're still mirrored and I still have to configure some stuff, but it's looking very promising. Okay, so since we're now back in Windows 11 and the jet engine of a fan has started to kick in, let's have a look around Windows 11 and see what is working and what isn't working. So as you can see here, we are running the latest version of Windows 11 and this is the fully featured Windows 11 not Ghost Spectre or Tiny11, which might actually work better on this device, but I wanted to see how the full version of Windows 11 would perform on this device that basically meets none of the requirements. As you can also see, the touch screen is in fact working. It is a bit slow, of course, but it is working. I can scroll through stuff. It works quite decently. There's one problem since we're talking about the touch screen already. This screen works fine. As you've just seen, it works fine. The problem is the screen down here. The touch layer here, for some reason, gets applied inverted onto the screen up here. As you can see, when I'm selecting something here, dragging my finger across, it selects it over there. I can type on the calculator here although my finger is on the opposite side of the device. So that's a bit of a problem. I tried to fix it because someone in an old forum thread had this issue fixed for Windows 10. 
The problem is the fix, as far as I know, only works on 32-bit windows. And here we have a 64-bit only operating system. I also tried to install the more recent version of the Wacom driver, because the screens are made by Wacom. The problem is the new driver doesn't recognize them at all and I didn't have touch on both screens. So for now I have one working screen and one that just isn't working. <laughs> if you have any ideas what I can do to fix this, please leave a comment. While we are on the topic of things that don't work on here, <laughs> sadly there's more. For example, the SIM card isn't working. I put my SIM in here, it works for example in the Surface Duo, under Windows 11, it doesn't work on here. Audio isn't working. For some reason the speakers in the device aren't recognized, they don't work. The camera isn't working. The accelerometer used to rotate the screens if you tilt the device, also not working. And the weirdest bit, the GPU seems to not be recognized. So if we have a look here in the task manager, our CPU utilization is actually very low. Normally under 10%. And our RAM utilization is also very low. It's under 2 gigabytes, 1.1. But you've might already spotted our problem. There is no GPU listed here. And the weird thing is, from the Intel Arc database, I know that this sports a Intel integrated HD series GPU. And it actually installed a driver for it. And as you can see here, we have the uh, HD graphics utility. But I can't actually open the driver utility, it crashes every time. And every application that uses 3D acceleration also just instantly crashes. So the GPU seems to not really be supported. Which, to be fair, I actually kind of thought would happen. Because this GPU is very, very old. But besides that, as I've shown you, it is actually working quite well. I really like it. Touch is just straight up better supported in Windows 10 and Windows 11. But if we want to have a completely functional device using both screens, I personally wouldn't install Windows 11 on this device, to be honest. It works, as we can see here. The majority of the important hardware is actually recognized but I would just go the route of Linux on here. It is better supported, has less system requirements and it's way more customizable to actually take advantage of the hardware we got here. Since I can't even install any game on here, I guess that's it. We successfully installed Windows 11 on a ancient weirdo UMPC and that is really cool to see. I think it's just astonishing that Windows 11 actually works on such strange and old hardware. So if you have any ideas about other operating systems that I could install on here that maybe work a bit better, <laughs> leave a comment and if you want to see more shenanigans like this, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.